Kenny's got it up right, but we're not with him. I have good news to bring That is why I sing My joy How with you I'll share I'm gonna take a trip In a good old gospel ship Go sailing through the air I'm gonna take a trip in a good old gospel here again with a lot of blessings in our physical health. We thank you Lord for everything. We thank you Lord for all the grace that you have done in us in the past days. Yes, we are here again Lord. We ask you Lord to be with us. Allow the Holy Spirit to work within this place and to work to all our friends who are around this world. Please be with me this morning. Get the message of what their soul needs today. And by thy divine power, we'll do the operation to bless every one of us. We give you the glory. By your Holy Spirit, you lead us, Lord, to deliver the message today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are here again. This is the uh, gospel of salvation, healing, revival. In Jesus Christ, and this is also our uh, online Bible sharing. Uh, hopefully, you are uh, fine. Every one of you there are in the presence of the Lord. So, we have the message today that we found in uh, 
in the book of Second uh, Corinthians, chapter two, verse one to seventeen. So we will read the golden text, our key text, from verse fourteen. I read and it say, Now thanks be unto God, which always cause us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the Savior of His knowledge, the symbol, and make it manifest the symbol of His knowledge by us in every place. So we have the message today. It say, Victory is belong to God. So all our uh, victories, our successful, was through the work of our Almighty God. We can do nothing without God. But by the presence of God in our life, we can have the successful and victory in our life. So we have the two topics today. The first topic is, joy of one is the joy of all. Number two, victory is belongs to God. So these are the topics that we are going to discuss. But before we will proceed to more explanation, it's better for us to read first the scripture, the verses where we got these messages. So we will start to read from verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1. This is uh, what it says. But I determined this with myself that I would not come again to you in heaviness. Or if I make you so right, who is then that make it be glad? But the same which is made sorry by me. Verse 3. And I wrote this same unto you, lest when I came, I should have sorrow from them of whom I am to rejoice. Having confidence in you all that my joy is the joy of you all. So this is where we got the message. For out of much affliction in anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears, not that ye shall be grieved but that ye might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. Verse 5. But if any have caused grave, he had not grave me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Verse 6. Sufficient to such a man is this punishment, which was sufficient, which was inflicted of many, I should say. Verse 7. So that, contrarywise, ye ought rather to forgive him and comfort him, lest perhaps such a one shall swallow up with overmuch sorrow. Wherefore I beseech you that ye would uh, confirm your love toward him. For to his end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be of obedience in all things. Verse uh, 10. Home ye forgive any things, I forgive also. For if I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it, for your sake forgive it, in the person of Christ. So, I repeat, to whom I forgive it, for your sake, forgive it, forgive I it, in the person of Christ. The Satan shall get an advantage of us, for he for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay. Uh, we understand what is the main point of Apostle Paul here as we have read it from verse 1 to 11. We understand that Apostle Paul enumerates how he wrote his epistle with his uh, great in heart while write, writing his uh, epistle. There is a grief in his heart and with tears. As he wrote this epistle, the contents is about counseling. Counseling the church to love this one, to love one another, 
counseling the church to forgive. It's another. That they will forgive in the name of Jesus. Not in the forsakes of others. But for the sake of Jesus, we will do a forgiveness. And his aim is, the joy of one is for all. So, that is the main point of Apostle Paul. Why he wrote this epistle to, in the church, to the church. To advise them. To forgive each everyone for the one who afflicted many. To show their love and comfort him. So that uh, it will uh, fulfill that the joy of one is their joy for all. Okay, so our topic is joy of one is the joy of all. I do not know if uh, this is easy to happen in our uh, family, in the group, in the congregation of any society. Because still, we have the attitude desiring a joy. But sometimes our humanity is uh, enjoying himself only. But uh, through that epistle of Apostle Paul, we learn that uh, he counseled in the church that we have to put the joy. Joy is for one and for all. So let us uh, learn how come to be. As we read in verse 1, we quote his word, that come again to you in heaviness. Apostle Paul avoid to go in the churches with a burden in his heart and to become a burden to the churches. So, so that we have a joy. That joy is for common, not for a, a lone, only person. We have to uh, go that we are not a burden for the person whom we will visit it all. When we are belongs to any group, we have to avoid to become their burdens. That is what the points of Apostle Paul. So, his points is don't be a problem in your family. Don't be a problem to your friends. Don't be a problem in your church. Don't be a problem in your company. Don't be a problem in the society where you belong. That is the uh, clear points of Apostle Paul. So let there be meek among that love to others. As we have read here in verse 4, you might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. So in the next uh, uh, verse 5 to 10, it's enumerate how to forgive a troublemaker. As we read in verse 6, sufficient to such man is this punishment which was inflicted of many. So a person who doing irregularity act or what kind of act that cause affliction of many, he also suffered and he also uh, not in the right situation. So Apostle Paul said here that he is also in the punishment. And the only way for us to help him to move on, not to exaggerate the case. Sometimes that is the problem within the group. Even it's a little case, it's not a problem. Exaggerate it and it's become a great problem that cause a separation to the team, to the group in the churches. So Apostle Paul uh, understand this case that was happening. That the best way, the good way for us to solve this case is we have to forgive. We have to show our love for that person. We will not put him in discrimination, but we will show our love. Because sometimes a person 
Sometimes they are in their abnormality situation. They lose the soundness of their mind. And they don't understand what they uh, speak in their mouths. They don't understand that uh, their word is uh, an offended word. Or sometimes they don't understand that uh, what they are doing is uh, not good help to others. So the one who become a troublemaker, he is in the abnormal situation. And the only things to help him to move on, to come to the right mind, to be enlightened in his mind, to know what is right, is when he feel and he received the love from us. That is a very powerful to lift up others of sharing our love despite of what their uh, shortcoming, of what uh, wrong things that they have done. So let us see. Forgive in the name of Jesus. As we read here in verse 10. To whom ye forgive any things, I forgive also. For if I forgive any things, to whom I forgive it for your sake, forgive I it in the person of Jesus Christ. So don't forgive for the sake of any person, but through Jesus Christ in the name of Agape. Well, uh, there are some cases that uh, there are uh, uh, happenings uh, and the grant was rise in between two. And uh, some of them can manage themselves to forgive its everyone. But sometimes they forgive the one. Because in the name, in respect with his parents, in respect with their friends, in respect in their groups, in respect because it is their church meet. There is no, there is no bad in that. But Apostle Paul said here that when we will forgive, we will forgive it in the name of Jesus Christ. So, it is a broader to understand and it's unlimited that the reason why we will forgive each other is because there is an agape in our hearts. That is what apostle means to say. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, meaning to say that we forgive it because we have the agape. We have the love of God. Even we do not know his family, her family. Even we do not have a common family with that person who become a problem. Even he is a stranger for us. But in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, or the love of God, we have to do it forgiveness. Because if we will not forgive in the name of of agape in the name in the name of the love of God, someday the problem will rise again. That is uh, often happens when there are some who had a uh, uh, grudge, misunderstanding. But when we forgive each other in the name of Jesus Christ, in the power of the love of God, totally forgotten, and that person had a great uh, improvements because he now and he understand how unlimited to be in the love of God. How precious and how sweet, how comfortable to be in the love of God. That is the point of Apostle Paul. So let us go in a little bit. Close the door for Satan. As we read here in verse 11, Lest Satan shall get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So, that, that is a, a warning. That's why Apostle Paul uh, advised to love the person who make the troubles and to forgive the person so that we will close the door for Satan because if we do not uh, uh, seal the love, if we do not forgive, then Satan might have his uh, advantage. 
Satan might have his chance to intervene, to exaggerate the case, and it's become a great problem. That is the point of Apostle Paul. So, that was happened in, uh, in the case of uh, Abel and Cain. When God uh, accepted the sacrifice of Abel, and God did not accept the sacrifice of Cain, and that's the time that Cain get hatred on his brother. But the Lord said unto him, as we read there in Genesis, as soon as early, you have to repent. Because if you do not want to repent, here is the sin at the door of your house. In his desire is you. So that is what was the work of Satan. When Satan perceived, understand that there is a hatred inside in our hearts, Satan will come and try to deceive us, misleading our hearts, misleading our mind. And implanted his uh, negative thoughts. So, if we don't forgive, then that is a danger. Because we are opening the door for Satan. But if we forgive, we close the door for Satan. If we love for those person who do not know how to love us, we close also the door of Satan into our life. So, you understand that, uh, my dear uh, children? Uh, it's often the cause of war between group in groups between individual to individual because Satan had already entered in the relation because there is no forgiveness okay I hope you understand what we have uh, discussed so this is how we gain the joy of one is the joy of all so that Everybody is happy. Everybody have a joy. Everybody go together. I remember the song. Sometimes we laugh together. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes we share together. Heart is in love. That's a very nice song. So even there are some problems, even there are some misunderstandings, but we have to come to the point. Of forgiveness and love so that the joy of one is the joy of all praise the lord may the lord bless every one of us okay we will go to our uh, next uh, topic we will continue to read our scripture from verse 12 to 17 furthermore when i came to throw us to preach christ gospel and a door was opened unto me of the Lord. Notice, the door was opened to me of the Lord. The Lord opened the door. Verse 13. I had not rest in my spirit because I found not thus my brother, but taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Now thanks be unto God, which always caused us to triumph in Christ. Praise God. And make manifest the symbol, symbol of his knowledge by us in every place. For we are unto God a sweet symbol of Christ. And them that are saved. And in them that perish. Verse 16. To the one we are the symbol of death unto death. And to other the symbol of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Verse 15. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. Okay. So, let's uh, come to learn what does the point of Apostle Paul. We understand how Apostle Paul entered the door opened by God to him. As we have read it, that the Lord opened a door. And Apostle Paul entered into that door. Where he has a triumph in Christ. So, he had a great 
triumph. He had a great victory. He had a great success for when he entered in that door. That is what I am. I understand. And how he became a savior, both in the presence of God and man. Tengo na natin lo kano nagbalinta nga isuti angot ni Kristo it is ang wala ti Dios kan it is ang wala na gitita tao. Nabanglo ti angot na ure awan purpium na ure saan na nga nagpurpium inarami ti Dios nga nabanglo na. In English Apostle Paul gained the sweetest silver even at the time there is no uh, purpium such the purpiums today. But they become a symbol in the presence of God, the symbol of Christ, the symbol to the deep, and the symbol to the light. So we understand here about how Apostle Paul had a victory. So number two, victory is belongs to God. Uh, this is uh, importance for your uh, all to win. We cannot have a victory in all concepts of life. We need a victory. We need a successful. And all successful in our life, all victory in our lives belongs to God. And all failure in our life is belongs to Satan. So that is very simple for us to understand why we serve God. Why we have faith in God to God? Because all victories against evil things is belongs to God. Satan will never allow a person to have a successful and victory over the evil things. But always Satan is the creator and the author of failure. Okay. Let us go to that is what we have read here in verse 14. We thanks be unto God, which always cause us to triumph in Christ. Apostle Paul said that he give thanks unto God because all his victories, he gained the victory, he gained the successful in life through Jesus Christ. If you remember my uh, previous preaching that Apostle Paul is the persecutor of the church. But when Jesus Christ arrested him in the road of Damascus, in that's the time that Apostle Paul became a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. In all his journey in the ministry, in all his life in the ministry, he recognized that without Christ, he has no victory in life. But with Christ, he has all the victory of life. So you remember that? There are a lot of things to elaborate in this part, but uh, let the God will be the one to continue to give more messages unto you. Okay, let us go to letter A. The door opened by the Lord. What is the door that opened by the Lord? As we read here in verse 12. Furthermore, when I came to Troas to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was open unto me of the Lord. If we continue to read verse 14, it is clear Apostle Paul denotes the door of victory and the ministries. As he had said that he had a triumph in Jesus. God opened the door of victory unto your dear children. Maybe you do not know what is that door. Maybe you cannot see in your physical eye, what is that door? We cannot see. But in every appointed time, in every situation, as we always have people in God, have trust in God, as God did to Apostle Paul, during the time that he had a many enemies in his life, those are the times also that God opened the door of victory against his enemy. That's how God deal with his people. Amidst of tribulation, amidst of a lot of trials, 
God always opened the door. The door of victory. For your dear uh, friends uh, in abroad, uh, I do not know what is your situation. But for those who go in abroad, maybe you don't a part of the church when you go to abroad, or maybe you are uh, uh, already a members in the church when you go to abroad. But either you are uh, a Christian or not Christian. And later on, you become a Christian. I hope and I believe God has opened the door for you, my dear uh, friends in abroad. And I don't know what that kind of door. But you, you know personally what the door, what God opened a door for you. And that is where you, your hearts are. Commitment. And that is what is your heart's burden. What you are doing. God opened the door for you. To everyone who hear this message. Maybe you are at your local country. Or what place where you are. What company where you are. What society where you belong. If we Live such like a puzzle for God also is always open the door for us. It's not the door of course. It is not a door of uh, misery. It is not a door of to paradise. It is a door of victory. It is a door for a privilege. That is what I understand. Of what this what door that opened by the Lord to Apostle Paul. As God done to Apostle Paul, he will do it for you. He will open the door for you. Praise the Lord. God opened the door for us. Even we are in the situation of pandemic today. Because we are God's people. Because we are God's children. God did not close the door of victory. God did not close the door of being an abundant assurance in his presence. God always opened the door. A door of salvation. A door of healings. A door of victory. A door of success for And difference for sick or concepts in life. Little B. Savor of knowledge. I don't know if you have already smelled a savor of knowledge. Ah, uh, well, at nagayam ti nabaglo nga awot iti panakamu. In this scripture, we understand that there is a savor of knowledge. Let us read in verse 14. Praise the Lord. All Christians have a God savor. There is no sting Christian. Yes, if Christ be with us to do his ministry in every place, we can deliver the symbol of knowledge. That's number one. If Christ in us, while we are in the ministry, doing the ministry because Christ is in us, then the symbol of our ministry is God's symbol. It's not a thing ministry. By preaching the gospel of Christ. And that preaching is acceptable teaching in, in line to the wisdom of God. Not bubbling words. So I'd rather uh, have a limited words than to spoke a lot of words that those words are bubbling. Those words has no meaning. As we have read in uh, verse 17, for we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, 
in the sight of God is speak we in Christ. So what was written in the scripture, that is what we preach. We do not corrupt the words of God. We do not uh, seal the word of God. As others had done. And that's how Apostle Paul, they become a symbol of knowledge. Because they delivered their preaching. Not in the bubbling words. Not in the way of gossips. Not propagating the scripture. If we have a lot of interpretation. If we deliver the scripture a lot of interpretation. There is the possibility that we propagate. We propagate the scripture. Our preaching is bubbling. Our preaching is not longer a symbol in the presence of God. That is what I understand. So, for me, it is called a simple preaching. That preaching is a symbol, not a state. Praise the Lord. It will see, it's a symbol of Christ unto God. As we read here in uh, verse 15, for we are unto God a sweet symbol of Christ in them that are saved, in them that are pierced. To the one, we are the symbol of death unto death. Into the symbol of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? I don't know if you can get the points of Apostle Paul. As they are the symbol of Christ in the presence of God. They are also the symbol of death unto death. <laughs> they are also the symbol of life unto life. So, deep, deep, deep. I remember the song that some teach to the children. Deep, deep down in my heart, we need a deeper understanding today. Apostle Paul talking about a reputation. Anyway, there's no bad if we will go to a literal. That they have a uh, good smell as the symbol of knowledge. But why he said that a symbol to death unto death? The Apostle Paul means to say is uh, to convince the unsaved to die. That is what Apostle Paul said. Why did he become a symbol of death? To have the power to convince the unsaved people to die. Maybe you have the conclusion. Or maybe you are judging what I am seeing. But let me continue. Did he become a symbol of death? To convince the unsaved people to die? What kind of die? What kind of death? To apart or to separate from the world. Worldly life. That is what Apostle Paul said. So Apostle Paul, not talking on the literal death, but death means to say it's the separation. So we will, we will uh, uh, say in a simple direct words. Because of their good reputation, their good reputation as an evangelist, as an apostle, as a pastor. It is enough to have the power to convince the unbeliever to believe on them, and they are willing to uh, they are willing to renounce their worldly life and willing to become born again. That is what Apostle Paul said. So throw the symbol of death to every Christian will also bring death unto death. Because of the good reputation of every Christian, they become alive, they become a soul to the unbeliever that convinced them to renounce their worldly life and accepted a born again life. I don't know if you accept my explanation. If I am wrong, forgive me. But 
for me, that is what Apostle Paul said, why they become a symbol of death unto death. And a symbol of life unto life. In order to invite and seek to live in a spiritual life. So that is what Apostle Paul said. Symbol of death unto death. It is the inviting power to the unseen people to die spiritually and worldly life. But to live spiritually as God promises to everyone who repent on their sin. My dear friends, there are a lot of things to have to explain, to elaborate. But I'd rather rely on God to bring more messages unto you so that we can understand this chapter 2 in 2 Corinthians from verse 1 to verse 17. But as I have already delivered unto you, the message is victory is belongs to God. Our victory today, we cannot do by our own self. We cannot gain the victory through human knowledge. Yeah, we have heard the news that every president in every country are waiting for the vaccine of coronavirus. Just to have their hope to have a victory on their war against COVID. But for us, to have a have been in, in the vaccine, still we have the victory from God. Because as God what had done to his people in the land of Egypt, he protect them. Even there is a ten plagues that was happening in the kingdom of Egypt. His people were never, never become a victim of those ten plagues. And that's also what God will do today. Our victory over our crisis today is not belong to the scientists. It's not belong to our uh, own self capacity. Although uh, that is God, we will do our part. So. But the complete victory is belongs to God. We cannot uh, say to exclude the powers of God today. Because all power is belongs to God. It's only God who can bring us a total complete victory in every area of lives. Maybe you are waiting a new door unto your life. As we have uh, explained here in the message, God will open the door. As God opened the door for Apostle Paul, God will open the door to every one of us. Have faith and wait for that door for you. That door is the door of victory for your alone road desire wishes unto your life. May the Lord bless you. We will pray. If you didn't receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, oh, I help you by prayer. We pray for us to repent on our sin and receive oh, Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. If you have any sufferings today, God will do instant miracle healing unto you. I will help you in pray. And by your faith, God will do the healing you. And others' problems that you have now, God will open the door yes, to solve the problem today. For that is the word of God today. The word of God today, He wants everyone us to have a joy. He wants everyone that we have the door of victory. He wants everyone to have a peace. He wants everyone that we have a good symbol, a symbol of knowledge, a symbol in the presence of God in man. He wants everyone of us to have a victory from Him. Okay? Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, You are the God of Almighty. The author of mercy and grace. The author of victory. If somebody here wants to receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, did you know how he repented? How she surrendered her life? 
We give you the glory and thanks for extending the salvation unto my friends. So by your grace and mercy, allow him to be a member of your family by accepting Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. It's only you, God, who can input the belief, the faith in his heart, that he will also, one of your family members, become faithful upon receiving Jesus Christ as his personal Savior. Glory to God. We thank the Lord. We give you the glory for the salvation of my grace. If, if anyone here also has a suffering and needs a miracle healing, now we believe that you can do possible. Even I am not in their presence. Even we have a long distance prayer. Even we will do it in social media network. We will do it in online. But you are the God of omnipresence. You are present in every place. So you are there to touch them, to touch their sickness and bring the miracle healing of today. So we pray in the name of Jesus to renounce every disease unto their body. I, we will not mention the individual name of this disease, but by your power, by your divine power and authority, you know all the sufferings right now. Renounce in the name of Jesus and renounce all the sickness unto them and bring a miracle healing unto them. We give you the glory in the name of Jesus, we pray. And for other friends who needs heals, I do not know what kind of heals, what they are waiting. Maybe it's about financial, maybe it's about relationship, maybe it's about uh, uh, their uh, routine every day in their life, I do not know. But if somebody needs a capital for their business, then provide that capital. Please, everyone who are in online business. And please also everyone who are in the works today. Some of them are in the office. Some of them have a, a livelihood. And still there are some who are still applying for their job. We pray, open the door for them. That they will be accepted in the company where they applied for a job. And other also wants to go in other uh, our works uh, as uh, some of them wants to have go open the door for them. As you have brought them into the poorer country to work, then you bring them again successfully with the great blessings unto their uh, homelands, to their families. Yes, dear God, I do not know what is the problem of my friends who are uh, viewing this video today, but you know their problems. Uh, so we pray in the name of Jesus to bring the solution for the answer of their prayer that may your name be glorified unto their life. We give you the glory for the answering of prayer in the name of Jesus we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless every one of us. I know that hear your prayer. And God uh, loves you. And see you again this coming Sunday. First God. God bless you. Do, do not pass me over.